I'm Rob. I'm Nate. And welcome back to Rob and Nate Record a Podcast. And we should begin by saying it has been nearly 18 months since we've touched this recording. We haven't re-listened to anything we previously recorded before this, recording tonight. This ain't gonna flow. I say we lean into that. Because we watched the first two and then learned about the third one, and we thought we would watch the third one in well, dollar the whole, theaters. The whole plan was both around watching the third one in the dollar theater. And the third one never made it to the dollar theaters before COVID shut down the theaters. And we looked for rentals on this digitally and could not find it available for less than like $9, and neither one of us was willing to spring for it. Not, not only were we not willing to spring for it, we neither of us wanted it as permanently part... Like because I think you kind of had to buy it at least. Yeah. None of us wanted this as, on, on you know, be stuck with it. So I finally had the idea to rent it from Redbox. So Nate, first impressions of, we're talking about the third installment in the Bad Boys franchise. Twenty twenties Bad Boys for life. Nate, what was your first impressions of this movie? I am almost hesitant to get into it. I almost feel like you should get into it. You were the one that was trying to. I was, drag me into this franchise. Well, so the first one was a guilty pleasure, and first the second one was awful. And the second one was kind of a guilty pleasure, but I hadn't watched it either in well, quite a few years before we watched this. Neither was, one really holds up that well. It was well. tolerable. The second one was better than the first one. And we, I had repeatedly heard that the third one was the best one in the franchise because it wasn't directed by Michael Bay, mm-hmm. and the first two suffer greatly from the Michael Bay cliched faux pas. Yeah, the excesses of Bay. And so we'd heard that this one was going to be better than the first two. And I'm sorry, it wasn't. It was not better than the first two. It was better than the first two. You think so? I liked it. You liked this? Of, of the three, this is my favorite. This is the only one you openly mocked while we watched it. Did I, did I not mock the first one? Not while or, we watched I it. I probably just grumbled in pain. Let me tell you why this this my the evolution of my experience for watching this movie. So very early on, they've got the car chase or the uh, what appears to be very early on. It's the it's very the first opening thing. sequence. They're on a chase, and Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. They're it's not entirely clear what they're doing, and then we turn out that that's a fake out because they were going to the hospital because Martin was becoming a grandfather. Marcus, yeah, Marcus, yeah. Well, Martin, yeah, and his daughter. Married the awkward boy from the one movie. Who from the second became one. Became the mar- uh, Marine. Yeah. Actually, they, they weren't married yet. They marry later in the film. But they yeah. have a baby who they name for Marcus. Yeah. And the, you just have a lot of this kind of forced banter, like in earlier films. And then you have you know, the the Nissan Quest, when the informant is the killed and falls into the minivan and smashes it up. And this just kind of bad crap like you got in the first two movies. And then the movie, and then they even add the Ammo Squad, which is their potential spinoff group that they have to team up with to figure out who's killing these various law enforcement officials, judges, and cops, and prosecutors. And it's all related to, spoiler, Will Smith's illegitimate son that he had with a Mexican witch 25 years, 26 years Who was years married earlier. to a Mexican drug lord. That they take out in like the first movie, uh, or no, it was pre the first movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is backstory, so you've got a lot of backstory, and I, I don't know how much character development you could say that the Will Smith character had, but I do feel that the Martin Lawrence character grew over the course of the franchise, and I like his little well, yeah. his flirtations with religion, and I, I like his kind of becoming this old grump as opposed to the young grump he was in the earlier ones. I actually felt that there was something of an arc there. And then I feel that the movie, the reason why this movie is the best, even though the first half of this movie is just is just like the first two, it's just kind of, eh. What helps it is when it decides it does not want to be a bad boys movie anymore. And it becomes some other kind of schlocky thing. Like, I enjoyed the sequence at the club where they're going to get that guy undercover, and then it results in the chase, even though the chase ends ridiculous, and then they go down to Mexico for the for this for the secret mission. The chase that ends in the propane explosion, <laughs> as opposed to a gasoline explosion, yes. which Michael Bay is famous for. Mm-hmm. Instead, they use a propane explosion. So all they're doing is like 
mocking and paying homage to the first, not mocking, but they're trying to pay homage to the first two films. There are shot for shot remakes of the first one. Like there's the Miami airport sign with the helicopter flying over it. Mm -hmm. That's identical to the first movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I liked how just kind of bat crazy it got towards the end with, with the witch and, when the helicopter crashes into the whole hotel and then CGI fires coming forever. The terrible CGI fire. And with, with that uh, piece of the, the glass uh, stabs that stabs guy, the guy and I laughed neck. out loud. It was kind of glorious in a schlocky way. It, it, it became like the Bad Boys movies are bad movies, but it became more the kind of bad movie I like in the last half of the third one. I enjoyed watching this more than I enjoyed watching any of the other ones. I enjoyed this one the least, and this one has ruined the entire franchise for mm -hmm. me. I don't think I can go back and watch the Bad Boys movies oh, really? ever again. How the tables have turned. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, just the combination of everything. Like, yeah, they they don't hold up. I also tried to watch the ABC spinoffs. Or not. Fox. The Fox spinoff series. Subsequently canceled. That was painfully awful was that actually supposed to be the same gabrielle union character? yeah absolutely okay. and they make a lot of references to the movies uh, okay. and she makes references to her brothers and or to oh. her brother and, Interesting. Yeah. yeah that's weird this kind of decision to try to we can get more out of this thing. and they make a whole bunch of references to things that happened in the second movie with gabrielle gabrielle union and how she needed like how she isn't fully over that and, uh, yeah i would watch an ammo squad movie so the Ammo Squad is this other group that, that is created that uh, it's got Vanessa Hudgens in it, which I thought was just kind of random casting. She's third build, but she's probably like number nine in terms of dialogue and like screen time. Yep. She's hardly in the thing. If they were to make an Ammo Squad movie like a Suicide Squad movie and just really play up, just you know, go even beyond this movie and just make it ridiculous, I think I could enjoy that movie. And it even has a post credit scenes. It's so funny that this is considered the wrap-up. Oh, it's up, got a setup, yeah. But it's totally setting up more. Yeah. And I don't know why. There, there shouldn't be anything else in this franchise. This franchise should have been over. I mean, yes, it's yeah. not kind of nice to have the trilogy, or the the third movie for the, you know, for the two characters, the Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, Mike and, and Marcus. But at the same time... It, there doesn't need to be anything more to this. There didn't need to be a third one. Yeah, it's... Yeah, this movie, I didn't care for it. It was... I felt like it was poorly done. Yeah, it's too over the top, and their attempts to pay homage to the first two movies were too heavy-handed, and... What do you think when they killed the captain? I was actually a little bit, bit bummed out that they killed the captain. I was a little bit bummed out, too, and then the moment it happened, I'm like, how the hell did I not see this happening? I mean, this is supposed to be the wrap-up, they got to kill somebody. Yeah. Now some of that was the well. They informant? were making an effort to kill like everybody from the, the informant that that falls on the mini man. Was he in some of the earlier films? No. Of the earlier? no. That's from the storyline that predates the oh, first okay. film. Yeah. Yeah. Was there other, somebody else that died from one of the earlier films? I think there was, but now I don't recall who it was. I wasn't making notes as oh. we went through this one, and yeah, it was. I don't recall. They did really kind of shoehorn that that reference to Gabriel Union about midway through the film. Yeah, it was because they're. I think that that was Synergy. airing while they were filming this, uh -huh. and I think Fo they already knew Fox was canceling that show, and so I think that's part of why they try to push the Ammo Squad thing so hard. You know, as some sort of other. They really want to make that it. happen, especially some sort of serialized thing. It uh -huh. seems like, you know, like a TV show, but it just yeah. The the one on Fox was was painful to watch. I could not bring myself to finish the first season. Wow. Which, you know me, I can watch some bad shows. Mm. And I could not finish that first season. That that tells you something. No. Oh. So, and the Ammo Squad thing was too forced. You it know. was forced. Would some of it was so predictable, you know. And, like, when the Ammo Squad shows up when they're going, when they've gone to Mexico to go yeah. get the witch. You called them again? You know, and... I called it. I was like, oh, the, the squad's going to show up, just like in the second film down in Cuba. You know, we can't let you do this alone mm -hmm. moment. And I called a line of dialogue myself. You did. Like, strikingly accurately. <laughs> yes. 
like at the moment it was said because it wrote itself. Yeah. How would you actually let's play a quick game okay. on this movie only? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Quick game on this is for reference, we rented this from Redbox. Uh-huh. I could not bring myself to spring for the Blu-ray edition. All right. We rented just the straight DVD. It was supposed to be like a dollar eighty-four with taxes. It was like a dollar ninety-six or something Rip to rent off. this. How overpriced was this? Sixty-two cents. I'm not going to value it. But it was. <laughs> I think we both agree. It was at a dollar ninety-six. It was overpriced. Correct. I would. I well. I didn't. You paid it. So for me, it wasn't overpriced at all. Uh, but it I'm kind of glad that we finished it yeah well I'm glad we kind of I'm glad we finished it eventually because we'd already done the first two and it's been sitting on my hard drive occupying space waiting to be edited so we could finish the third one I think we started I think we recorded the first one in late 2019 we saw the first one it's been nearly two years since we we saw the first first one, one or you showed me the first one a year or two before so when we recorded about the first one, I hadn't seen it for because I refused to rewatch it because yeah. it was horrible. But yeah, so this this podcast, this particular episode is something like three years in the making. If you count back to when I, when you first showed me that. Well, when we did the first one as part of like a guilty pleasures month. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what how it originally started was the first one. I considered it to be a guilty pleasure, but by the time I showed it to you, I hadn't watched it in like three or four years or something. Mm. So, yeah. How would you rank the three films in this franchise? In reverse order. Three is the best, followed by two, followed by one. I've kind of gone back and forth. For sure, three is at the bottom for me. Mm. But I've gone back and forth whether I like number two or number one better. You know, part of it's just like you can't beat the original. Mm. But at the same time, I felt like the action in the second one was, was better. It was not, I don't know. I found the first one just so off-putting. Yeah. Just it made me angry, and the second one did a similar type. It was a similar type of film, but it just did it better. I felt like that as well for the most part, but then as I sit here tonight, again, it's been so long since we watched them. Part of me wants to go one, two, three, but I think I'm going to go two, one, three. Mm. Two is the best one that's in the middle, and for me, the third one was the worst. So, mm. how would you rate? Number three. Probably two stars and uh, wow. probably five. On the ten star, star scale. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give this one and four. Mm. Its Metacritic score on IMDb is 59. And its aggregate score on IMDb is 6.6 6 stars. It's directed by the two directors, Adil El Arbi and Bilal Falah. This had a estimated budget of ninety million dollars, and now as we give the box office numbers on this, we have to keep in mind this is probably the only film that was helped by COVID, mm. because this it was, was a January twenty twenty release. It was a January twenty twenty release, and it was still in the theaters as all of the other titles started getting delayed, mm. and so it stayed in the theaters and got a bump strictly because it was the only big release. Still in the theaters. It, what, is it the most money-making film of last year? I don't know. I tried looking for the numbers from last year um, a month or so ago, but all the numbers I could find were international. It's almost like they were ashamed of the domestic numbers. I'll look up one other one in just a minute. I think Tenet beat it, but I'll double-check mm-hmm. in a second. So this had a domestic opening weekend of $62 million. It had a domestic gross of $206 million. Wow. How much was the budget again? Ninety. And then two hundred six million. That's with a worldwide healthy. gross of four hundred and twenty six million. Wow, that's extremely good. For this film, yes, it was. The uh, Rotten Tomatoes score for this movie. Mm hmm. Seventy six percent. Wow, I'm, I'm really pretty surprised by that. This did better than Tenet. Oh yeah. Tenet had a domestic gross of just fifty eight million. And a worldwide gross of three hundred and sixty-three wow. million. I think Bad Boys for Life may have been the highest-grossing movie of twenty twenty. I think it was. I think it succeeded because of the time Timing. that it came out and because it's comfort food. Yeah. Tenet isn't comfort food. It makes your head hurt a little bit. Yeah. This film makes your head hurt, but for an entirely different reason. Indeed. 
Yeah, any other thoughts on this? I think we pretty much uh, squeezed that lemon. Yeah, this is definitely the shortest in the series of three. This will likely come out as all one big conglomerate episode, so it'll be long regardless, but mm. yeah. I just actually think it's funny that they, th these are such trite movies. The biggest twist is how we ranked them. That you liked uh, that, it? Is that, that, I, that, that over the course of it, you became completely disillusioned with the franchise, and I grew to kind of like it. Like, I hate the fr the first one I despise, the second one I tolerate, the third one's first half is just schlock, and the last half is good schlock. There you go. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good synopsis. So I'm Rob. <laughs> I'm Nate. And this is Rob and Nate Record a Podcast. I'm genuinely surprised you liked this. Uh, I'm genuinely surprised I liked it. It was probably at around the two-thirds mark that I, I think I like this one the best. <laughs> I thought you were going to hate it because like, you don't mock movies that you like. Well, I don't really like it. I like it in comparison to the other movies. Fun. What did we say at the beginning? Did we say we were going to do this as one big one or we were going to do this as... There's two on here movies? already. All right. I saw so the we're pause gonna, We're going to make this, uh, I guess you'll find out in the editing. What? If, we're, if this is going to be like an hour and 40 minute long episode, or if this is going to be three episodes. You just said flow. you wanted it to be one. Yeah. So I'm going to make it one. Well, okay. But if we say earlier that it's m multiple ones, then do multiple ones. This is back when we were recording everything as well. That's true. So, at least the start of it. Uh -huh. This kind of works as an introduction to part three, though. This will all end up as outtakes. Got to turn up the bass on both of us a little bit. Okay. That was interesting. Bring in the noise. Bring in the funk. Are you ready? Khaled, DJ Khaled, Khaled. <laughs> You're in a funky mood again. <laughs> yeah. You ready? Yeah. I guess we're going to play the game for this movie. No, no, no. Let's go. Let's, let's keep going. That'll end up getting cut a little bit.